So you guys, as I said, we are here with Jamie. I am so excited that we get the chance to talk to her today because there's so much awesome stuff to ask her <laughs> about and discover. I love your site, as you know. I totally like printed off like a ton of your posts and took them with me while I was traveling. Like I just love her content so much. But anyway, will you just kind of introduce yourself and a little bit about what you do? Yeah, so I'm Jamie Starcevich. I'm the designer and blogger behind Spruce Road. I work primarily with creative entrepreneurs or small businesses on their brand identities. So um, that's my main focus right now. Gotcha. So you've been working for yourself for um, how many months now? So just since January of 2015, so about seven months. That's like completely full time that you've been mm -hmm. doing that. Yes. Um, can you kind of tell us like, has the majority of your income been like graphic design, websites, information products, how does it kind of play out? Um, it's primarily been brand identity, so mm -hmm. logo design and then usually a few collateral pieces with that, whether it's business card or a PDF worksheet or contract template, whatever it is. So yeah, primarily brand identity. Which is what I'm like begging her to design for me <laughs> for this new project right now, you guys. Anyway, um, so tell us, you're actually releasing um, your first course yes. coming up here soon? Yes, I'm so excited. Um, so it's called Shareworthy Design and it's an e-course to help kind of boost traffic to your site through graphic design. Um, so blog post images through Pinterest. Um, I know when I'm on Pinterest, I pretty much only click like the pretty ones and the ones that the content appeals to me. But uh, I think that image is like the first impression you give. So that's my course. It's all about typography, pattern design, illustration, color. So I'm super excited about it. Yeah, that's actually how I found your brand and most of the brands that I love is through Pinterest. Um, so tell us, what type of person is um, your Shareworthy course a good fit for? How much skill do they need? What programs will you be working with? So it's primarily like beginner to intermediate level. So if you don't have any design experience, you're welcome to join us. Uh, we'll be talking about fundamentals and then also intermediate, even if you've done some work in Illustrator, but you don't necessarily have that design background, this is for you as well. Um, and I'll be using Adobe Illustrator primarily and then some Photoshop. Awesome. And those are both uh, programs that people can do like a 30-day free trial. Yes. And then there's like a cloud membership or something, right? Yes. Yeah. And if you end up not liking the program or can't afford it long term, you can use the concepts in Canva or whatever free program you use. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. I love the mess out of Canva as well. So, <laughs> so it'll apply in general. You're going to be teaching the concepts of design and how to make them work on a blog and yes. like that. Okay. Yeah, specifically geared towards blogs. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Love it. So check out that. Um, you can go to her site, which is her brand is Spruce Road. Her site is sprucerd.com and you mm -hmm. can check out more information on Shareworthy Design, right? Yes. Shareworthydesign.com. I love it. Or oh, just share where they designed it. Yeah, either way. Yeah, it's even faster. <laughs> um, okay, so tell us, uh, since going full-time, um, what do you most enjoy about being independent now? So I think the thing I enjoy most is kind of nerdy. It's like the whole like, business strategy side of it. Uh, I worked full-time as an employee for like four years, so... Being out on my own, I really enjoy like kind of brainstorming where I want my brand to go like long term and then how can I get there like today or even like six months from now, what steps can I take? So that's awesome. Is that you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's you. That's definitely me. And it's funny because out of all the interviews, like you're the only person who said something nerdy like that. <laughs> I'm like super excited. I own it. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag own your nerd. Somebody please tweet that. Yes. Um, okay, so the favorite, your favorite part about being independent is really just getting to strategize and plan and mm -hmm. really cast like big vision. But also, what I've noticed about your brand and your blog, everything in general, is that you're very action oriented, which is what drew me to you because it wasn't um, what some might say fluffy. It was very like, this is how you do it. Yes, yeah, that's so me. I'm not fluffy. I'm kind of like, here's the tools you need. Now get to work. You yeah, know? I love that. <laughs> So um, tell us, when did you first realize like you wanted to work for yourself? Was it a bad job experience or were you just like, eh, I don't know, working for myself would be better? Um, and how did you make the transition? So I actually, um, if you heard me talk in college, I would say like, I'm never going to work for myself. Like that's kind of my background. Uh, both my parents are entrepreneurs. So I grew up seeing, you know, 80 hour work weeks and just like glued to the phone. 
So I didn't want that for myself at all. But then over time, I just kind of realized like, okay, I have a bigger vision than working for someone else. Yeah. Um, I'd be more fit for me. So um, I don't think there was like one moment that was like, right. and now I'm doing it. Yeah. Like, over time, I kind of grew tired of being the employee and um, just wanted to work with a better fit with clients. And mm-hmm. so, mm-hmm. yeah, it was kind of a mix of a lot of different things. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so what are some of your favorite portfolio items that you've maybe designed or it can even be blog posts that you've created that you're just particularly proud of or that you feel reflect your brand well? Yeah, I, um, I've been so blessed to work with some awesome clients since launching, uh, which has been my goal. Um, so Lindsay Conradi, I just wrapped up her brand identity. She's a makeup artist. Um, I loved her vision. She wanted something feminine, but not lettering and not pinks and um, so it's like a different take on it more refined and minimal so I felt like that spoke to my brand as well um so I really enjoyed working with her and it's one of those clients that like you send the first proof and they're like approved you know (laughs) so So awesome so I think it was good on like so many levels that Mm -hmm. that's been one of my favorites so far um as far as blog posts I love talking about brand strategies like one of my favorite things to talk about could go on and on um, or just design tips and tricks also. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really um, love the post on your site. You actually kind of hop into some of the things that you've been doing since you went full-time. Like you had my first month full-time. Yes. And um, you're just really kind of transparent, showing the behind-the-scenes of it and helping people maybe make better decisions if they're doing it, you know, yes. or the decisions you made that really worked really well. So. I like all those posts on your site. Just throwing out my favorite portfolio Thanks. items. Um, so tell us about the challenges. What has been the hugest challenge or maybe frustration since going full-time? I think the biggest challenge is probably patience, um, which I'm sure anyone who has their own business struggles with that as well. It's like you launch in like January, for instance, and then you just have to wait a while till your name gets out there and um, in the background, you're working so hard, you're hustling, yeah. you're blogging all the time. You're like, is anyone reading my blog? Like, I don't know. But six months down the road, it pays off. So I think the biggest struggle is patience for me. Gotcha. Um, for people who are kind of considering going full time, would you recommend like being out there heavy with your blog and with other social media strategies um, a good six months to a year before they try and go full time? Or how would you handle it? Yeah. If I could go back, I mean, yeah, definitely that's what I would do. Um, And also just being intentional with your blog because when I first started blogging, it was more of like a creative outlet, and I realized not everyone's into that. So you kind of need to have a mindset of how can I help people um, and blog about that. So I think I would definitely recommend at least blogging like once a week or Mm -hmm. um, filling up a queue of blog posts would even be helpful which I don't do. I should (laughs) practice that when I preach. Um, But yeah, I think that, or even if you don't blog, like if that's not your thing, you don't like writing, whatever, um, find some way to connect, whether it's Periscope, Instagram, collaborating with other people, Twitter. I mean, there's so many different ways. Yeah. What I've loved um, that I've seen you do recently is your Lunch and Learn series. Um, And tell us a little bit about how they're set up and what made you want to do those. So yeah, Lunch and Learn, just a little bit of background, it's basically once a month, the first Thursday during a lunch break, and the concept came from when I used to work at a university, we had Lunch and Learns where a vendor would come in and kind of teach us about, here's all the new paper samples, uh, which is super exciting for designers, (laughs) Um, or like, here's a new printing technique, and so it was kind of a fun way to learn something on your lunch break, so that's the concept I took into my webinar. So it's a virtual lunch and learn um, where we all get together and either I'll teach or I'll have a guest speaker teach um, or an interview behind the scenes and you can ask Q&A and if you can't make it live, you can get the recording too. But it's a fun way to have community. Yeah, for sure. You recently had Kelsey of Paper and Notes on a lunch and learn, right? Yes. What did you guys teach about? Uh, She talked about InDesign. It was awesome because I have been in InDesign for like four years, like heavy every day in InDesign. And she teaches just a general like intro to InDesign. And I already learned so many new tricks from her. (laughs) So she was an awesome teacher. But that was the first time I collaborated with a guest host. Mm -hmm. And um, 
it just made the whole experience so much better. It was more fun for me and mm -hmm. I think the, the viewers as well. Okay, that's awesome. Um, and so have you found any kind of benefits to your brand for going, branching out into a video strategy? Is that something you'd recommend? Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, if you can get over the nerves, then <laughs> definitely do it. I think I was like really sick to my stomach the first time I did it, but just get that first one done with, move yeah. on. Um, yeah, I'm sure you're always on video. <laughs> But my first one, I was just like, what am I going to do? What if I mess up? It's live. Just then, do it. Just, did it. just like, that's what I did on Lunch and Learn. I didn't even honestly plan it that well. It was mm -hmm. just like, put it on the blog post, say I'm doing it. You know, mm -hmm. like, put it out there so I have to get it done. But yeah. um, I think it helps connect with people. At least I love watching you on Periscope. Oh, or, thank you. Uh, there's so many people I watch. It mm -hmm. just helps connect with them. And yeah. especially engaging with Q&A is so nice. Yeah. And that might be a good um, place to start for people. If you don't want to necessarily launch a webinar strategy, maybe try a few periscopes yeah. just to be in front of video and kind of definitely see how it works. You guys, it's a race like in 24 hours. So that's what I like about periscopes. I know. It's like just practice on there. That's fine. People don't care. Yes, for those, of them, or for those of the people listening who are not familiar with Periscope, can you explain just a little bit about it? Yeah, Periscope, I think it connects to your Twitter, right? It's um, You can follow people on there, and like Regina will hop on, and it's kind of informal. Like It's not like, I'm going to email you the webinar link to join. It's like, hey, I'm on right now. If you want to join, yeah. you can ask me whatever. I'm going to talk about XYZ or... You know, hey, I just want to show you guys this new trick I learned in this program, or it's it's behind the scenes, I feel like, most mm -hmm. of the time, and it's pretty informal. Yeah. So a great informal way for you to start in a video strategy if you're at all interested, and people can comment and give you hearts. I do yes, the hearts. <laughs> the hearts. Like, please give me the hearts. <laughs> right. It's a boost of confidence. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, I'm saying something somewhat valuable. Yes, there's a heart. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, um, so, anyway, back on track. <laughs> um, tell us about kind of how you structure your day. Is there some magic formula? I uh, know. I mean, it goes, I pretty much have a structure like day by day. So Mondays, like pretty much just catching up on email, doing some client work that's pretty loose on Mondays. I just try to be productive, mm -hmm. start out on the right note. Um, Tuesdays, what are you doing? Oh, a blog post on Tuesday because I post my blog on Wednesday. So I at least try to get ahead and, you know, create the blog post a few weeks ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And then schedule a newsletter. And then Wednesday is I remove all client work and I just work on side projects. So oh, nice. I highly recommend that if you guys have an e-course or an ebook or whatever it is you want to do. Um, I'm working on my e-course right now on Wednesdays. Nice. So it kind of removes distractions, which is super nice. Yeah. Um, Thursdays, client work, Fridays, bookkeeping. So nice. That's yeah. a great schedule. It's kind yeah. of loose. But yeah. yeah. Well, I guess it just. It doesn't feel as stressful as, like, I don't know, the traditional work every day on, you know, a million different things. It's just kind of, like, yeah. focused. Yeah, it is. And everyone works differently. Like, I tried to, the whole, like, block out certain times for different things. Mm -hmm. But it works nice to have, for me, just, like, you know, this day is this. This day is that, you know. I should probably switch to that. <laughs> um, tell us um, what tools you use on a daily basis or a weekly basis. Um, aside from the Adobe programs, which is obvious, I use Life, those yeah. all the time. Um, aside from those, I use Evernote for um, mainly just like brainstorming stuff. So I have several notes in there for like even like passive income or future okay. services. Um, it's kind of like a creative brainstorm outlet for me. And um, I don't delete much stuff from there, so it's not super clean. It's mm -hmm. kind of like just put the brainstorm ideas in there and I'll work into it later. I also store my recipes in there, which is nice. Nice, yeah. Um, and then I also use Basecamp for client management. Oh, right. So give us a little idea of what you do in Basecamp. So Basecamp kind of removes email out of the equation. So if you're working with clients, it's really nice because you have everything in one place. It's kind of like a Facebook. They just log in, and then they can see their projects there. 
usually just one project at a time. Yeah. Do to-do lists, calendars, files, uh, messaging back and forth. So. Okay. so you don't ever have to like search through your email for that one thing they asked yes. you to do? or Unless they don't post it on Basecamp. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> <That's right>. Yeah, <laughs> gotcha. So a great tool for maybe anyone doing freelance or type any kind of client work. Yeah. Where they would need to be back and forth. I think they even have like a free one project thing. So if you have home repairs, Mm -hmm. I've heard it's really good for that. Oh, look Um, at that. (laughs) And maybe a good way to try it out too. Yeah, Yeah. definitely. Awesome. So tell us, um, those are the tools that you use in your business. What are some of the best platforms that you use to promote your business? So the best platform, um, obviously a blog for me has been awesome. Um, And then from there, creating like, good images that with enticing titles and then pinning that to Pinterest. So Pinterest is the best thing for ever, right? Ever, (laughs) just in general. But for my business, it's Mm -hmm. like, that's the number one. I mean, almost everyone finds me on Pinterest. So, and I'm not super active on there either. So Mm -hmm. it just kind of shows how powerful that tool is. Yeah, I would agree with you. It's my number one traffic prefer. Um, I Sadly, only probably use it like once every two weeks now. Yes, <laughs> and then like maybe pinning, you know, post every so often. So, um, I think information just lives longer and is yes, categorized sure. in different ways on Pinterest. So it's helpful. People use it like Google. You know, if yeah. I if I want something and I know like I can find it better on Pinterest because that's a more curated group of people than yeah. Google. Yeah. Oftentimes, I'll go there for um, information, definitely recipes and things like that. Yeah. But people who are planning their wedding or people who are starting a business, they're on Pinterest, you mm-hmm. guys. Um, so tell us, other than maybe starting to blog sooner or in, you know, intentionally, were there some things that you would have done differently with your switch? Um, let's see. I don't know. Yeah, blogging is the main thing. I think even going more specifically with blogging, I recently started adding content upgrades, which has been a game changer. And those um, are basically like related to your blog post. So you have a specific blog post and then you connect it with a downloadable worksheet or a guideline, whatever it is. Checklist, any kind of thing. Yeah, but it relates to that blog post so people can exchange their email for um, that freebie. So I would have implemented that much earlier had I known how powerful that is. Super powerful. And you actually use lead pages to do that. Is that yes. correct? Yeah, that's another tool I use yeah. recently. Yeah, lead pages. That makes a huge difference. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so tell us uh, a little bit about, I guess, just overall um, how meaningful it is to you that you're doing this for yourself now. And um, for somebody who's maybe making the decision of whether they should work for themselves or not, can you give us maybe your first two action steps that you would give to them? Oh, man, it's so meaningful. Um, Just to see, like, the end product of, like, I have this website up here. I have this blog. Um, It's so awesome to actually be doing this out of years of, like I said, brainstorming and Evernote (laughs) what to do. It's nice to see, like, it actually has a home. Um, So it's so meaningful for me. But as far as action steps, what to do – I guess I would have two action steps. The first one is to really understand, like, why you want to start a business. Mm-hmm. And I often ask people, like, to fill in the blank. Like, I want to help people buy blank. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that's kind of a misstep a lot of people have. It's kind of a shallow, and I don't mean that in a rude way, but they right. haven't really thought in depth about what they want to do and how to differentiate themselves. So um, definitely, like, go really deep into understanding why you want to do something and how you want to help people Mm -hmm. Um, and the second thing would be to just gain experience doing that I mean that's something you could do right now like if you want to design pick up a freelance project for a friend or I even did personal projects like um, a roommate cookbook with my college roommates that's awesome so yeah it's it can be something you can do today um, whatever industry you're in so just start gaining that experience so you have some validity gotcha when you get started. That's awesome. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you so yeah. much. Um, I really appreciate you being here, and I'm so glad that I got to, like, meet her in person. And me too, you guys. <laughs> but anyway, so, yes, thank you. And we will see you guys later. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs>